Good morning. The Revolutionary War. Because we wanted to be the United States. The Civil War was more about what we wanted to be. Two things major came out of the Civil War. One, that we were going to have sovereign states. No, it was a sovereign country. And also, that all men had rights. We didn't know what that meant at the time. And so then came the 14th Amendment. It said things will be equal. Unfortunately, we couldn't figure out what equal was, so we did it separate and said that was going to be equal. That was further pushed in a decision made with Plessy versus Ferguson that said separate and equal is okay. And it just reinforced that it was going to go on like that. And so for the next 50 years, Plessy versus Ferguson became sort of the law of the land. And then in 1954, we had a decision that came down in Brown versus Board of Education. And it said, separate can't be equal. It's not possible. Either things are missing or they're not to the same level. Well, then the decision came with the civil rights. And then they finally addressed a little bit more and said, well, we're going to have equal, and it's going to be equal based on race, religion, and lots of other things. And we still didn't have rules and regulations that went with this. We had to try to figure it out. So for 10 years, we fought as a country with all kinds of things related to education and more about that separate but equal. The year I was born, 1963, we had a gentleman who was running for president, George Wallace. And George Wallace ran under separate now, separate tomorrow, and separate forever. And he stood in front of doors at the University of Alabama and said, it's going to be that way. And as we heard yesterday, someone was brave enough to say this is going to stop and had him removed. Next, we had the Coleman report that came in and said, you know what? You can do all you want to do, but there's other factors involved. So even having separate and equal put together and we're going to have segregated schools, it's not going to be the same. We need to do more. And at the time, we had a president who came in and said, you know what, I'm going to do this big fight on poverty. And we started having compensatory education. And we started underlying some of those factors and bringing in some additional funds. And the intent of those funds were to say, you know what, we're not equal. We don't have equal backgrounds. We don't have equal facets. But we'll bring in some extra funds and we'll try to lift that up. So today, many of you receive Title I, you receive Title III. Within our state, we have at-risk 31A. We have a reading grant. We have lots of other facets that come in to help to some extent. But we still haven't figured out what equal is, what fair is, what is equity, what is equality. We interchange those words continually like they mean the same. I don't know about you, but I remember many times as a kid saying, that's not fair. And my parents would say back to me, life's not fair. When I was a kid, fair meant equal. You got $5, I get $5. If I'm going to shovel this part of the driveway, you're going to shovel that part of the driveway. But as I became older, I came into seeing equity a little bit more. Equity was, we didn't all need the same. My brother, who was eight years older than me, might have got more in his birthday card, but he had a lot different expenses than I did as a six-year-old. 
When I look around, some of you have glasses. I have glasses too. I am cheaters. What's it? Is that fair? I mean, we all were given the same eyes. We all have eyes. But some of you wear glasses so that we can both accomplish the same task, and that is to read. You go to the hospital, you have a broken leg, I have a slight scab, we both get a band-aid. It's equal. So we continually have to try to figure out what those words mean as we move forward. The district that I am humbly the superintendent is the district that I went to. I started there in kindergarten, I finished there uh, 13 years later. I now am the superintendent. It's not a small town. It, uh, Wyoming is a town of 75,000 people. My office happens to be 100 yards from my boyhood home. I played on the roof of that building and got in trouble several times. <laughs> But as I look at the district that I came back to, I left for six years. I had to find someone in the state of Michigan who would marry me, and I was fortunate to find my wife away from Wyoming. So we moved back to Wyoming in 1991. When I came back to Wyoming, we were at 8% free and reduced lunch, a half a percent EL, 8% minority students, and before proposal A, we were in the 47th percentile in terms of funding in the district, or in the state. Today, we are 82% free and reduced lunch. We are 60% minority students. I have 25% EL students. And I'm in the zero percentile for funding because we are a base funded district. Now, life's not fair. I, I accepted the job. So, I have a choice to make. I either accept it the way it is, or I have to do something to change it. So, when I took over our district, we had two high schools. And those of you who know anything about Wyoming, and you, I know some of you probably wouldn't even come up to me and say, hey, how are the Vikings doing? How are the Golden Hawks doing? I don't know, we don't have those two high schools anymore. We couldn't even make budget. I've lost a quarter of my kids in the last about 10 years, a little bit more. That was before the 5,000 in the last 20 years prior to that. But I still have to provide every child who walks through there the best possible education. So how do you do that? So we combined the two schools. We came out and this picture up there, we are the wolves. How do you have community? So we put the schools together Made a bunch of cuts. My first year, I came to the board. That was the year we had to put full day kindergarten in. I'm looking at an $800,000 bill when we already have a huge deficit. So I go to the board and I say, hey, let's put the two high schools together. My first year, <laughs> nine zero, no way. By March, I had it at a fourth, or sorry, seven zero. March, four, three, one. And by September, the whole district was recolored and we started over again. Why? Because somehow I had to get that equity piece in there. Because our kids, I couldn't allow adult decisions to allow our kids to have class sizes that were going to get so large that we were going to have to cut so many people and so many services to them. So I ask you as we move forward, I'm, I live in a very fortunate county, Kent County, and we have wonderful support from our other superintendents. They have supported me, they have supported our kids in many, many ways. So I ask you, what are we going to do moving forward? My opening day, I walked in, walked down to a room, and there were six adults coming out of a kindergarten room. Two African-American, male, female, two Hispanic, and two Caucasian. I don't even know if they were together in that form or another. It just was interesting to watch out. All six of them had tears in their eyes. They all come with the same thing they want from us for their children. And then I have this daunting task that I feel, and we have to own, that they all lead the same. I'll leave on one thing. We've done a lot of things in Wyoming, but the one thing, and I am so unhappy, and I'm so disappointed. We talked about the Reading Now Network. One of my school, I got my first reward school. It was my most needy school, it was a reward school last year. But this year, I got a, a 
from our MSEP results back in fifth grade, we have 54 African Americans. Zero percent. Zero pass the MSEP. How do I look at families and children who come from such deficits and say, I'm doing the job? Do I love my job? But I don't want to always feel successful. We cannot continue to do this. I need your help. We need each other. We have to make a difference with every single child. We have fought wars. We have made big decisions. We have to do that last piece. We're the home of the brave. Thank you.